Okay, I finally made a decision uh, on this poker table top. I went to buy materials the other day. I got two sheets of, I call them three quarter inch Baltic birch. Uh, they're 18 millimeter. And I wanted to buy one sheet of half inch. So we're loading it on my pickup and I, we picked this sheet up and I'm kind of thinking it's a little strange. I thought maybe we were loading up the three-quarter first, but we put it in the pickup, then we went and grabbed a three-quarter inch piece. And I told him, I said, this is not half. This is, which is what he sold it to me as. We went and checked that it's five-eighths, 15 millimeter. So he said, well, do you want it? I'll, I'll give it to you for the price of half. I said, yeah, I guess I'll take it. Um, when in reality, I probably shouldn't have done that. But uh, here's the here's the whole uh, thing about this story. I was thinking about making my my poker table top a five foot top, three quarter inch thick, and then doing the trays along the side in half inch, uh, and then have the center fill with uh, you know tabletop fabric, poker poker table fabric. At any rate, I did I did some some calculating here, and this five eighths, which is actually like I said uh, again, is fifteen millimeter. When you break it down into uh, pounds per square foot, uh, if I were to make a sixty inch diameter three quarter inch top, it would it would weigh nearly fifty pounds, or just just over fifty, I believe it is. And if I make it uh, four foot six, it'd be 41 pounds. Now this sheet, which is uh, 15 millimeter or five eighths, a 60 inch top would weigh just over 43 pounds, and a four foot six top would weigh 35 pounds. So quite a difference from uh, uh, the full thickness of of uh, three quarter, and I think this is going to be plenty thick and sturdy enough, and um, and I'm going to go with the 54, and let me show you what I've got in mind here for for my uh, table, and incidentally this I didn't notice this stain until I brought this downstairs. We loaded it with the other side up, but I want this to be my base this card table so that what I want to be able to do is break this down and put everything away. I don't want a dedicated um, poker table. I don't have room for one. I do have room to set one up, you know, play the game and then when we're done put it away. So at four foot six I think that that's going to be plenty good and here's one other difference I'll show you. Um, this is the five foot. Let's see if I've got this here. Make sure I grab the right, right one. This is the five foot um, diameter section, and um, yeah, this is the right one. Anyway, what I was looking at was the distance from here to there, and that is about. 20, 23 inches. When I shrink the table down to four foot six diameter, this becomes about 20, I think it's 21 inches, which is still not too bad for, for an individual, 20 to 21, to be sitting at a table and, you know, not uh, not getting too uncomfortable, I guess I'll put it that way. So the last time, well, one of the other guys' table that I played at was just a four foot diameter table with eight of us sitting around it. And that was, to me, that was too tight. So I think the extra six inches in diameter, you're not too far away to deal cards and you're, um, you're not crammed together too tight uh, to cause trouble that way. So, like I said, this is going to be my, my, my legs, this will be my top, 
and then um, I'll deal with the field uh, uh, the trays out of half inch I'll, I'll figure out a way to mount them to this top now the other way I'm going to treat this top is that I'm going to take it and kind of treat it like a, a table leaf I'm going to rip it down the center uh, make some dowel pins and bring it back together cut my cut my diameter pull it apart and ha be able to, to uh, take the two halves and store them in a closet uh, they'll, they'll each be two feet three inches wide which will uh, and I've got a closet down here that I can easily put it in there and lay it down I could also just leave it together and roll it in there like a big wheel but uh, I think for maybe transportation purposes and other things it would be much easier to have it cut in half so that's my plan we're gonna see how it works out I've, I've been thinking about this for a long time and uh, I've just decided to to do it so like I said first plan our first thing is to cut in half. All right, after ripping them, and I have that method I use where I, I rip down the middle, uh, flip them, take, take a little bit off of each side, flip it again, and then come back down the middle. Uh, with this one, I made one more pass because the uh, downside the upside was down so I was getting a little chip out but I flipped it over and now I got a nice clean cut so I'm not this concerned about the grain matchup as I am about the color matchup I guess uh, but you can see I got a, I got a nice uh, match here so that, that's gonna that's gonna be really work out nice now I just want to give you a measurement to show you how much I took off. This was 60 inches wide when I started. It is now 59 and 5 eighths. All right, a quick update. Uh, as I'm laying out my dowels, I had five, one in the center, then uh, basically two uh, either side of that one foot and then two either side two feet off the center but I realized that when I drill my hole here for my uh, centering pin for my route router to make this circle I'm going to use a router uh, jig to do that I'll be going through that dowel or at least at a minimum damaging it and I don't want to do that so I'm going to locate two pins a half inch on either side of it and uh, I probably really only need one, but that's what I'm going to do. All right, I got my uh, two halves uh, kind of, uh, not kind of, I've got them clamped solidly to my workbench. And I've got one set up here and one over here. And the reason I've got them both clamped and ready to go is that uh, the way I have to do this is I've got to do this whole location and then go over to the other piece and do that one uh, at this you know, right after this so I've got this set up where this is the set distance from the edge I'll use that as my uh, indicator over there I'm going to use the uh, fourth hole I believe it was third or fourth hole doesn't really matter as long as I use the same hole I think I'll go third hole here one, two, no, I won't either. I want to be about two inches in. So I'm going to use this one. Go over and do that one and just go back and forth. Then the other thing I need to do is make sure that I keep this oriented in the same direction. This part of the jig on the outside, on the X side. So. I'll move over and come back and I'll show you how that other part of this jig works. Yeah, you so I'll 
slant it down. There's a, a location, and from here on out, I think I'll use the middle hole. So locate that. Actually, if I use the first hole, it'll be right on the mark. Now use the first hole here. Well, see how close I came to the mark like I did over there. Yeah, see here's my mark. And I know that I'm, I'm doing well because that's just a little bit off center, but I know exactly where I am. Now I'm gonna have to change this for this next hole. But every change I make, I have to use no, I, let's see. That would work. I'm use the first hole again. I'm going to be past my center line. And then I'll just keep doing this back and forth and I'll adjust to come back to here. The other thing I failed to mention is that once you locate your your uh, stop here or your pin into the hole. You want to make sure your rod is as parallel as possible to your workpiece so you don't get it uh, skewed one way or the other and that would change this dimension. Looks like it's going to go. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I'm, I'm perfectly flush here. But my boards must not have been lined up perfectly when I, and that's perfect. When I was doing my arc, I can see my lines are just a little off. I shifted this way. But the jig brought everything right back into, into center. That's nice. So you can see I'm just a hair off. But I'm flush here. So I'm good.